All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today and for taking the time to attend today's webinar, Four Overnight Options at Torres Lutaina National Park. My name is Ana Camerer. I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I work for Emerging Destinations. We are a sales and marketing representation company in U.S. and Canada. Today, I will be your co-host, and in a few more seconds, I will introduce our guest, Mr. Pablo Araja. Next slide, please. As you can see right now on your screen, Emerging Destinations has a big, diverse, and adventure portfolio. In Central and South America, we have Terranova Tours in Costa Rica. We represent the Guyana Tourism Authority. Also, we have Cruz Andino, the famous lake crossing in Patagonia. Um, Hotel La Torres and a Fantastico Tour in Torres Lupina National Park in Chile, our host on today's webinar. Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon and Grand Hotel Lacks in Argentina and Uruguay. In Africa, we are proud of representing Kellyan Peacock Safari, the Alewana Collection and Sky Safari, all of those doing Kenya and Tanzania. Eco training is in South Africa and then adventure consults in Uganda and Rwanda. Lastly, our polar product in the portfolio is completed with Adventure Canada, Iceland Pro Cruises, and Iceland Pro Travel. We are really very happy of having these cool companies and cool places with us. If you have any questions, if you have any brochure requests uh, or need digital material, please feel free to reach out to me after the webinar. You can see my email address at the bottom of your screen now. Before starting with the webinar, I would love to give you a few housekeeping items to go over for GoToWebinar. All attendees will be mute and this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to answer the phone or need to do a break, don't worry about that. We will be sending you the playback later by email. We will also upload this recording on our new YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations, as well as on our website, emergingdestinations.com. We encourage you sending any questions. You can do that on the GoToWebinar control panel on your right. Pablo Rasha from uh, Fantastico Tour and myself, we will be answering them either at the end of the presentation or by email at the end of this week. So let's start with our webinar. Please help me welcome Mr. Pablo Araja, Sales Manager for Hotel Las Torres and Fantastico Tour. I'm going to pass everything over to you, Pablo. Okay, Anna. Thank you very much, Anna. Well, um, my name is Pablo and I'm a Sales Manager at Fantastico Sur. Uh, a trekking company in Patagonia. Basically, we operate trekking tours in the Torres del Paine National Park, which is widely known for being a kind of trekker's paradise, really. Um, for those who are new to the to the Torres del Paine National Park, this place is located very at the end of the world in the Chilean Patagonia. Um, First of all, let me introduce myself a little bit more. I have been working in the company for three years. I started a long time ago in the travel industry. First of all, working in local DMCs, and then I moved to Patagonia. So I've been Las Torres Hotel Manager for the last eight years. And since three years ago, I am both Las Torres and Fantastico Sur Sales Manager. And of course, I love the area. Um, I, I feel I'm not from South Patagonia, I'm from North Patagonia in my regions, but I have been working so long time ago already in Torres del Paine. I've done all the trekking tours and circuits that I really feel apart from the, from the Patagonians already. And well, just for you to understand a little bit more, um, Patagonia is a place, it's not only for truckers. Um, I go sometimes with my kids, the old one is 10, but he's doing trekking in the area since he was six years already. 
and he loves to do trekking tours as well as uh, horseback riding. So um, it's any way of place that can be enjoyed by the family like we do. Now, Torres del Paine, uh, I was telling you, is mainly known for the trekking programs that you can uh, do there. There are many, many options, but there are two popular ones. The W, which is the one that you can see the shape uh, as a W, right? And the O circuit. It, it, we honestly, Patagonians, we never talk about the O. This is what other people from other parts of the world uh, talk about. We talk about the big circuit, but since it's becoming so popular to talk about the O, I will do it from now on. Uh, so the the W, which is the, the most popular one, it can be done or is done normally from this side to the other one in five days and four nights. It can be done in five uh, nights or even in less, in three nights, in what we have uh, or we call a uh, express W, right? Now, Torres del Paine is not only about trekking. I will show you uh, later some other photos of the park, but it's a really wild and rough place. I mean, wild weather, glaciers, mountains, uh, turquoise colored lakes, rivers, and a wild fauna. It's a beautiful place, of course, for those who haven't been there. But uh, here is the W. Here is the classic W circuit. This is what everyone has in mind when they want to come to Torres del Paine. And this is basically day one, arriving to the park. Day two, the blue one, uh, the blue line, is the full day to the base, to the towers, to the viewpoint. And we sleep in the same area so two nights in this area which which we call it central where there are refugios camping sites and a hotel on day three we do the hike to the frances area it can be done to frances or cuernos both areas are pretty close on day three we do the frances ballet and then we come back and we lodged that last night at Paine Grande, Refugio Paine Grande. So the last day, which is day five, we do the Great Ballet hike and then by boat first and then by bus, we return to Puerto Natales, which is uh, Torres del Paine closest city. So the classic W route is a five days and four nights package, two nights in this area, one night in this area, and the last night in Paine Grande. And these here are some of the views that you can enjoy while doing the, the, this trekking. Uh, the Grey Glaciers, which is part of the Southern Icefield, which is stunning, it's beautiful. So, uh, this is Northern Seal Lake, which is a very beautiful colored lake and windy, very windy this area. Oops. These are the famous towers, which is, this is the main reason why uh, we receive so many visitors every year because they want to see these three peaks. And to be honest, the best way to see them is doing a long trek, which is to the base. This is the base, the viewpoint of the towers. Uh, it's a nine hours hike in total, five uphill, four downhill. And if, if not, then the other option is to see it from very far, which could be Laguna Azul, uh, but this is not a hike already. So uh, doing the trekking, this is the most popular viewpoint from the park. The Great Glacier again. And as I, as I was telling you, there is a beautiful wild fauna in the area. You will for sure see condors. I mean, that condors all around everywhere. You will see probably some gray eagles. You will see for sure as well foxes. And if you are lucky, you will see pumas. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so it's, it's not a, a big variety of uh, fauna, but there are some really stunning species as the condor and the Pablo, we can't hear you. It seems that there's you are you are having a technical problem. So sorry for the agents. Please stick around while we are trying to resolve this problem. What? is called Cuernos. Hello. And the fourth one is called Frances. Uh, we have a uh, equip tents. Hello, I'm very sorry something happens with Hello, my internet connection, probably. See? Yes, we lost you. If you can come back. So uh, I'm very sorry. You started to speak about mm -hmm. the wildlife. I'm okay. I'm okay. But probably, yeah, I lost yeah. the connection at some point. So I'm very sorry. Yeah. So we, here we are. Again. We love you here, there. I was so telling you, you about can... the fauna that there is a, it's not a big variety of fauna but there are some very beautiful species, okay? So in this area at the W tracking circuit, we own some, um, we own some camping sites, refugios and hotel. So the first one is in central sector where I told you for the W we need two nights to stay in this area. Uh, and here we have camping sites, refugios, and hotel. The second sector is Chileno, which is uh, a day tour only. So anyway, if any other person wants to stay here in this area, there is a refugio as well, a mountain hostel, and a camping site. And the third area is sector Cuernos, which is, I was telling you, is very close to Frances sector. So it can be uh, use any of those of these two uh, for the third night and but at Cuernos sector we have some cabins which is the only place in all the in all the circuit that uh, cabins are available here anyway there is a refugio again a mountain hostel and camping sites in Frances there is as well camping sites and a mountain hostel and well, I will not show you in this case Pine Grande since it's owned by a different company. So what, what I'm showing you is uh, all sectors that are owned by us. And the last sector, which is not part of W, but anyway, is, is a different option when we are doing the big circuit is Sedon, where it's only camping available. So let me start, first of all, with the first lodging option in our, in our, um, in our trekking tools, which are our fully equipped tents, which are on wooden platforms, okay? So I'm, I will be very honest with you. This is my, by far, my preferred option if I'm coming, if I'm going to Torres del Paine. Uh oh, something's happened with internet, it seems. Go ahead, we can hear you now. Yeah, okay. Pro yeah, probably the connection is not, but that it have it doesn't happen to me for so for a while. So sorry. So um I was telling you, camping is for me the best option to come to Torres del Paine. 
is the best way to realize how nature is in this place. You will feel the wind blowing on your tent. You will feel the drops of rain when while you're sleeping in the tent. For me, it's the best way to be really close of nature. Um, these tents are fully equipped, as, you, as I was telling you. These are on wooden platforms, so you are not on on the on the on the on the ground. Um, these are very good tents, by the way. They support strong winds. Of course, no problem with the rain. Actually, this area is not really a rainy area at all. I mean, light rains, but wind is the issue here. They come with um, with sleeping bags, um, with uh, with um, uh, oh, and with a pad where you will sleep. Imagine sleeping inside this beautiful Lenga woods. So anyway, since every sector has its restaurant, so okay, you are going to sleep in a tent, but you can uh, still enjoy great food at every restaurant of every sector. The second option, I was telling you, one of all the sectors has cabins, which is Cuernos area. So these are eight cabins. They are very simple. And, and these are double. So eight cabins for 16 persons. These are the cabins. Uh, as I was telling you, these are simple, basic. Two beds, but they have great views. So this is the point here. Great views and it's, uh, it's another option to be uh, a little bit more in a, in privacy, okay? Of course, in a tent, you are in a privacy, but you listen to all of the other tents. In a, in a mountain also, you will not have any kind of privacy, of course. So these are the tents. They are all heated, of course. They have great views of the Northern Sea Lake as well as the Cuernos. This is a view from the cabins where they're located, and they they don't have private bathrooms anyway. They have shared bathrooms, just as a mountain hostel, but it's a different, separate bathrooms of the of the mountain hotel, ho, uh, hostels. Okay. Imagine this view. This is this is probably my favorite place in in along the W circuit. And then. The third option, these are our mountain hostels, which we call in Spanish refugios. And a lot of people anyway, they still call them refugios uh, around the world because it was the name that we used for a long time. And refugios are uh, shared rooms, refugios or mountain hostels, sorry. These are very uh, in remote areas of the park. So, for example, this is Chileno. And the only way to get to Chileno is walking or by horseback riding. And this is the only way to get actually to most of our refugios, except Central, which are the ones that are at the beginning of the trail. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is Chileno. This refugio has only 24 beds separated in six rooms, and it's on the way to the base of the towers. This big one is Central Refugio, which is the one starting the, the W. This one is Cuernos, where the cabins are. And again, this place is, is for me absolutely the place with the best views of the park of all of the refugios that we own. This one is a different refugio. It's still a refugio, but uh, it's built on domes. This is Frances. And Frances has four domes of eight rooms each, eight uh, beds each, sorry. These are normal uh, rooms in the central. These are the domes in Frances. So it has eight beds, but in a difference with all of the other refugios, every two beds there is a separate space so it's a little bit more pri privacy in frances and uh, beds than in, in the other uh, mountain hostels and at the same time here every dome has its own bathrooms so there are bathrooms every eight persons which is another difference with the other mountain hostels these are the shared bathrooms remember that uh, here most of the options, except the tents and the cabins, are shared. 
anyway there are no private private rooms at all in along all the routes okay and this is what happens at our refugios. I mean, anyway, our guests, our visitors, they are used to share their time with others. I mean, they walk along the routes, talking to others, talking with others, they share rooms, they share all the spaces while they have breakfast or dinners. It's, it's a lot about sharing, really. And um, you will have a lot of times to be alone anywhere along the road. You can stop, you can do some detours in some areas. Uh, so at the end of the day, people want to get together and to share uh, the the day experiences about the trekkings. These are some of the foods that we provide. Some of the spaces on on the refugios. And last, we have of of course as well a more comfortable option to do the W, but in a different way, which is staying at the Hotel Las Torres. The Hotel Las Torres is this rustic construction building, which was uh, formerly the, the house of the ranch. This area, this, uh, this stance or this private reserve was originally a ranch, a cattle ranch. So, it was uh, it was for part of the ranch, the house of the owners. Uh, they cattle at those times cows and sheep, of course. Sheep are all around Patagonia, you will see. Uh, and when visitors started to come more and more to the park, they decided to um, to convert the ranch into a hotel. And this is how we started 25 to 26 years ago already. And nowadays, this is a hotel, it's a foster property, it's a rustic kind of hotel, but anyway, with very comfortable rooms. And the hotel has a, an organic garden, so we provide a lot of our, um, a lot of our preparations are based on fresh vegetables and fruits from the garden. And what we do in the case of the hotel is, of course, we're not going to do the complete W trekking circuit, but we are going to do day activities into each of the valleys of the W, which are the base, the, the, the one going to the base viewpoint. On, on a second day, the French Valley, and on a third day, the Grey Valley, but always returning to sleep into a cozy and comfortable hotel room with hotel food, right? So it's not exactly a W trekking, but it's you will cover most of the W since the only part that you are not going to cover while staying at the hotel is the Cuernos uh, hike, which is a five hours hike more or less, but it, it doesn't have, a, it's not part of the most important attractions, the Cuernos hike. So remember the three important attractions uh, covered on the, on the trekking is the base of the towers, the French Ballet, and the Great Glacier. And this is covered while staying uh, at the W at the hotel. So something very important, by the way, at the hotel, we brew our own beer. So imagine going every day for a hike, returning and uh, trying this beautiful beer at the, at the return. And this is something different at the hotel we don't not only uh, work with trekkings uh, we provide as well as activities uh, horseback riding a lot of and um, we can do a visit to the organic garden we can have a chat with the gauchos we can have actually we can be teached by the gauchos on what are the daily activities in in the in our in our hotel hmm. so well these are the four options to do or to lot at the W trekking route while we, uh, where we can have different experiences as well, as well complete the different experience between uh, sleeping in a tent or sleeping in a hotel. But at the end, we are always be uh, able to get to this place, the base of the towers. So 
thank you very much for your attention. Um, um, I know that you will have uh, further questions. Please do not do not hesitate in sending them. Um, thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pablo, for your presentation. Uh, we hope that this webinar brought something new for all of you today. Once again, sorry for the problem that we had with the audio, with the technical problems. Um, we will be sending you the playback uh, by the end of the week. So we hope that you can catch up with everything. Now, uh, we are going to answer a few questions that some of you have been typing on the control panel. The first question for you, Pablo, is on, let me see, can a moderate level three hiker enjoy torus Yeah. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, the W is a, is a, the W trekking circuit is a moderate trekking circuit. Um, if you ask me, any person in a normal physical shape can enjoy it, but just you have to be aware to that you are going to walk quite a lot. I mean, eight hours every day, uh, but eight hours is not that much really for a hiker, right? Now, what it is it is really important is to be well prepared. I mean, to have the correct equipment, trekking shoes, um, pole, trekking poles, good clothing, but walking eight hours a day or 12 to 15 kilometers is, is not that much, really. Uh, if you ask me for the big circuit, in that case, I will suggest uh, for those uh, people coming, or I will say them that it's more than moderate, right? Great. Then we do have another one regarding the photos that you were showing about the Quernos cabins and all the accommodations that you offer along the trail. What month were uh, these photos taken? I think maybe it's spring because of the colors. Uh, the photos of which area? Uh, the Quernos cabins. Ah. With a lot of uh, green and flowers. Yeah, this is spring time, which is uh, October, November. Yeah, this these flowers they come in October to November. Well, with the climate, uh, since the climate has changed that much, in they are coming a little bit later in the last years. Okay. And remember that we uh, in Chile uh, we are on the opposite season as in US Oops. and Canada. So sorry, our spring sorry. is your autumn. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, autumn time. Well, one of the great things of the park is that every season has different colors. Spring is what you saw on those photos of Cuernos, which is very green and with all of the flowers in bloom. Uh, but for example, autumn is all the opposite. I mean, most of these leaves that you saw, they they are red colored, they are brown colored. So autumn time is is a very colored season actually because the mountains are snowed again, and um, and there are some always green trees. So it's a beautiful combinations of colors autumn. Great. Then we have another one. Did you say that the refugios or bone time hostels are reached by horseback only? Yeah, or walking <laughs> or well, uh, without cars. I mean, the only one where we get with cars is a uh, is central area. All of the other refugios are only reached by horses or walking or well, in in our case, we have a, a boat, but it only provides stuffs and goods to Frances and Cuernos, but it can't be used by visitors and even by us. Okay, it's it, it has only a, a operational purpose. Okay, can you remind us the name of uh, the four star hotel that you have right at the base of the massif? Yeah, it is called Hotel Las Torres Patagonia. It's a very iconic property in the area. Uh, and is well known for being the kind of different options. It's, since most of the hotels now in Torres Paine, they are luxurious hotels or 
boutique or designs ones. We are not at all. We are all the opposite. We are the kind of local and authentic option to stay in Torres del Paine. Great. And which is the best way to contact Hotel Las Torres? Um, well, um, with you, <laughs> our, our, you can uh, you can send us an email. Our contacts are the uh, webpage, which is lastorres.com, or through our fantastic Osur agents. Also, I mean, every of our agents agents uh, agents sorry can put you in contact with the persons of Hotel Las Torres. Great, and we will include all the contact information in the Q&A that we will be sending on the follow-up. So don't worry about that. If you didn't write our email address or those things, we will send by email. Then we have another question. During a normal non-COVID-19 year, how early in the year would you have to book for festive? Who? Um... Mountain hostels needs to be uh, booked very in advance uh, because they are small. So there are two mountain hostels with only 24 beds, which are Cuernos and Tileno, which are uh, which are normally very, very, very demanded. And Francesa has 32 beds in total. So even with COVID, uh, mountain hostels are at a very high occupancy rate at the moment. Camping is easier, to be honest, but mountain host, because there are many, many uh, places, camping sites, but just 24 room uh, beds in a couple of the mountain hostels. Great. And do you have itineraries available for the park? Yeah, yeah, of course. We can also send, include that in the Q&A follow-up email. We will send you all the special programs with the W and the O and all the circuits that uh, Fantastical Tour is currently offer. So don't worry about that. Then we do have another one. Best times of the year to go and stay at the Hotel Las Torres to visit the base of the tower, the French Valley, and the lake. Uh, <laughs> I always have problem on the pronounce, Northern <laughs> Hulk or something Northern like that. <laughs> and how long to stay to see all these points? Four or five days? What do you suggest? Well, best time to get there, um, it's, it's, it depends on the person. My, my preferred time is autumn time or springtime, not summer. Um, which, and, but summer is the most demanded one. And this is because summertime is... Uh, is what people normally in mind they think to be the best weather in the area, which is not really true, at least in Patagonia. I mean, summertime is a very windy time. And so for me, the best time is coming in autumn, which is less windier, up, but very less. And as I was telling in 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 a few minutes ago, the colors of autumns are simply amazing. I mean, the, there is no better part to me than autumn time, which is between March and May. And the second question, Anna, was, sorry? Ah, how, how long? Uh, how, um, how long to stay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say that three days is short. I mean, three nights, sorry. Perfect, it would be four or five. In four day, in four nights, this means that you will have three days to enjoy the three complete days to enjoy the park. So in three days, you can visit each of the three valleys. Okay. So it would be five, five uh, days. We have nights, another sorry. one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it would be four okay. days. Sorry, five days, four nights. Great. Uh, we do have another one. How's the altitude? How about for non-hikers? Do you think is it possible or is there any problem to acclimate? This is a great, great question because I didn't mention it on my presentation, but Torzel Paine uh, is at a very low altitude, actually. It can be even, you can get to Torzel Paine navigating from every part of Chile. Uh, 
Torres Pine is very close to the fjords. Okay, so there is a is one river that connects the fjords with the park. So the base of the park is at 100 meters above the sea level, which is uh, around 300 feet, right? No, 300, yeah, 300 feet. So it's at a very low altitude. So the highest point that we will get uh, on, on the W tracking route is the base to the tower's viewpoint, which is at 1,000 meters above the sea level. So basically you there there is no need of acclimatization i mean there there you will never feel sick uh, altitude sickness while in torres alpine it's not an issue great thank you so we are having some uh booking requests already on the on the q a so this is I think that you did a great job, Pablo. Thank you so much uh, once again. And um, to all our travel advisors connected today, uh, remember that before the end of this week, we will be sending you a follow-up email with useful information as well as the recording and the Q&A with all the answers that Pablo has been answered right now. Um, the playback will be also available soon on our new YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations, as well as on our website, EmergingDestinations.com. So this is all for today's webinar for overnight options at Torres Alpine National Park. Once again, thank you, Pablo, for your time and for showing us this uh, beautiful place in Southern Patagonia. To all the mm -hmm. travel advisors, we really appreciate your time and connection with us today. And again, if we can help or assist you in any way, we will be happy to do it. So do not hesitate to contact either me at Anna at emergingdestinations.com or Paolo at pablo.arasha at cerropinet.com. We will be sending you the emails in the follow-up email, so don't worry about that. Um, we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And we look forward to having your clients doing the W circuit in Torres uh, Alpine National Park very soon. Pablo? Okay, thank you very much for your uh, for your time while this tra uh, this presentation. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Bye bye.